Yasi, and also the Court of the Acts of Apostles. As we celebrate this feast of today, we are called to be apostles. We are called to be evangelizers. Let us ask his intercession that we will remain steadfast in the vineyard of the Lord. In a special way, we pray for the station of SPG parishioners. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were saying to read the contract of heart, hear a lesson. Hear a lesson. You came to call sinners, Christ a lesson. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Hear your lesson. Hear your lesson. May Almighty God have mercy on us to give us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on the high priest to be for good will. We, we praise you. you. We bless you. From the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, Demas, enamored of the present world, deserted me and went to Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. Luke is the only one with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is helpful to me in the ministry I have, to the ministry. I have sent Tychus and to Thesis. When you come, bring the cloak I left with Carpus and Troas, the paper as roll, and especially the parchments. Alexander, the coppersmith, did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. You too, be on guard against him, for he has strongly resisted our preaching. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf but everyone deserted me, may not be held against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it, the word of the Lord. Responsor your psalm, your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your yeah. friends make known, O Lord, the Lord is of your kingdom. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Your praise be known, O Lord, the glory is of your kingdom, making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages and your dominion endures 
to all generations. Your grace be given to the Lord God, the glorious and your kingdom. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. Says the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord Jesus appointed seventy two disciples, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money back, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you for the laborer deserves payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter, they, and they will come you, eat what is said before you. Tour the sick in it, and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. The feast of today is a feast which is a bit particular, the feast of St. Luke, evangelist, who was a disciple of St. Paul during his missionary journey. He was comfort of St. Paul during the hard moments, especially when he was in prison. He accompanied Paul as a doctor, as a physician, and according to the tradition of the church, St. Luke was the, the one who, who, who painted, who imagined the paint of Our Lady, the portrait of Our Lady, which means the Gospel of St. Luke is that which talks more of Our Lady, the infants of Jesus, and his Gospel is said to be uh, the Gospel where he underlines the privilege of, the, of Jesus towards the poor, the humble, the abandoned, the parables of God's mercy towards them. And in his gospel, St. Luke underlines the universal salvation of humankind. So all of us, we are called to imitate this great apostle of our time, to accompany those who are in distress, in pain, in abandon, the way he did to St. Paul. St. Paul says, it is only Luke who is with me. The rest have abandoned me. It is only Luke who is with me. During the apostolic journeys of St. Paul, we have heard Demas loved the, the word and abandoned him. Those of Crescent, those of Titus, they abandoned him. It was only Luke who remained faithful up to the end of his journeys. Then also in the first reading, he underlines that it is God who remained and gave me the strength to remain faithful to the mission at, at the, up to the end of time. In the first reading, the question is, are we faithful to our friends in moments of trouble, in moments of, of hardships, or we abandon them like Demas, Crescens, Titus, 
or more words like Alexander, the copper smith, who did great harm to St. Paul. So today let us ask the grace that will remain, faith, will remain nearer to those who are in hardships, proclaiming or becoming more of, of Christians by our way of life, accompanying those who are in need. Like even in the Gospel of today, we hear Jesus, after sending the twelve apostles, he saw the need was great. He sends other seventy-two, two by two. What does it mean? We are called to work as a community in testimony, giving testimony or proclaiming the gospel according to our calling. We are called to move together as a community because when one becomes tired, becomes weak, the other one can lift him or her up. The way Luke lifted it, St. Paul in his hard moments of life. Also in the gospel, Jesus invites her to pray for, for laborers in his vineyard because the need is great. Praying for laborers means we, we, we journey with them spiritually, socially, morally, materially. And we are called to involve in this mission, all of us. None of us is excluded because, according to Luke, salvation is for the whole world. The salvation will reach the whole world if all of us were involved and will remain faithful until the end of time. In baptism, we go to this mission. We are called to participate in the mission. We go from Christ, from apostles, through baptism. This is our inheritance. And this mission, Jesus reminds us, is not a simple mission. He's sending us like the lambs among the wolves, giving making us aware that eh, why, why, if you live your Christian life in a sincere way, you will get always some difficulties, some obstacles, some hindrances, even from our own people. But remain strong because at that time Jesus will come to help you. Then our message as missionaries, as evangelizers, is peace. Be people who love peace. Be people who bring peace to others. And this peace is through sacrifice and through a sincere love. And once we bring this peace to others, then the kingdom of God is ready at hand. Let us ask St. Luke to intercede for us that we become really peace-loving people. And even in the Gospel of St. Matthew, blessed are the peacemakers they will be called children of God. Amen. Covident in God's grace, let us stand to him with our prayers. For an increase in religious vocations, may the Lord bless those discerning priesthood or consecrated life with generous and open hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are elected to government, may God's justice be in their hearts and guide their decision making. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are facing adversity or burden of any kind, may the peace of Jesus calm their fears and bring them consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who worship in this place, may God's grace help us grow in perfection in faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in peace of Christ, may God grant them eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. For our special intentions today, let us offer them to the Lord in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, in your compassion, hear us and answer our prayers. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
that we may serve you in freedom of heart, we pray, O oh Lord, so that the offerings we make on the feast day of St. Luke may bring us healing and give us glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for you have built your church to stand firm on our apostolic foundation, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages and ending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. Holy, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of Face. Must on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph as spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to compare us to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, O oh my Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and from the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, and our kingdom be, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all disgrace, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who to the staff of the Lamb. Lord,
let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we have received from your holy altar may sanctify us and make us strong in the faith of the gospel which St. Luke proclaimed through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. To have one of us celebrating the birthday, we can come forward to bless him.